Alcatraz, the impregnable prison built on an island, the world's most fortified prison. Some even called it the greatest fortified structure in history. As a result, it contained the most dangerous criminals. Despite many attempts to flee, one escape was successful, and it was the greatest. Today's story is one of a kind and incredibly wonderful. But first and foremost, dear viewers, if you want this content to be continued, remember to interact with the story. Thank you for supporting our channel by liking and commenting. Today's story happened 61 years ago, in the year 1962. But why is the Alcatraz jail escape regarded as one of the best in history? Well, the main reason is the legend that surrounds it. Alcatraz is the impregnable prison, everyone said. And to be honest, this is correct. The prison is located on an island encircled on all sides by frozen seawater. In addition, the island lies two kilometers from the mainland. This means that even if a prisoner manages to escape from the walls of the prison, it would be hard to navigate the turbulent, frigid seas. Even in the summer, the temperature of the sea does not exceed 12 degrees. Above and beyond all of this, the staff and guards of the prison spreaded some myths to scare prisoners, for instance. They used to say there are great white sharks in the sea. Even if one of the inmates tries to escape, he'll be a tasty snack for sharks. They also informed the prisoners that the prison guards are part of the elite troops. They have excellent aim and shooting skills. And every guard is under orders to shoot any prisoner who attempts to escape. Despite the fact that everything was a lie, the rumors were maintained by the jail administration. To further establish the myth of the invincible prison, and it was through those lies that the prison administration provided an unspoken message to the detainees. They will never be able to get out of this prison before they finish their sentence. And because of Alcatraz's strict security, there were only the most dangerous criminals placed there to get them to quit thinking about the outside world. But do you believe criminals will stay calm and peaceful without attempting to escape from prison? Of course not. During the time Alcatraz was open, there were 14 attempts to break out of prison. Even so, none of these attempts succeeded. And for the captives who attempted to flee, their options were to go back to prison or to die. However, there was one successful effort. This is the story for today. The prison break that ruined Alcatraz's reputation. Let's get this party started, shall we? With the inmates who planned and executed the operation, they were four inmates. Alan West was the first. Frank Morris was the second. Concerning the third and fourth, they are, in fact, John and Clarence Anglin, brothers. Good. If you've ever heard this story before, you will state that there is an issue. Only three people managed to flee. They are Frank Morris and the brothers John and Clarence Anglin. Regarding Alan West, his future will be revealed later in the story. Before getting into the details of this story, let us all learn the names of these four people. Alan, Frank, and the brothers John and Clarence. By remembering these people's names, it will make it easier for you to keep track of the details. Alan, he had the idea of escaping from prison. But how did this happen? In reality, the inmates had been assigned to work inside the prison, cleaning, carpentry, and repairs, for example. One of these days, Alan has been assigned with the responsibility of cleaning the cell ceilings. Furthermore, as you can see, it is the existing space above the jail cells, Alan discovered there was a hole when cleaning. This gap, it's an opening for ventilation. It leads directly to the prison's roof. This gap, it is made of steel bars. However, the bars were not particularly strong. It is easily removable. Therefore, if he has the ability to find a solution to cut off steel bars, this will be the opportunity to get out of prison. In addition, he went to alert Frank about the situation since Frank was in the same cell as him. However, more crucially, their rooms were directly beneath the ventilation hole. Recognizing the strategic importance of the location, Frank began developing a strategy to carry out the most powerful escape operation in the prison's history. True, Alan was the one who noticed the gap. However, Frank was the operation's mastermind. He is the most intelligent of the inmates. According to inmate records, Frank has a score of 133 on the IQ scale. This means that he has a place to the world's smartest 2% of the population. Frank started out in planning an escape plan. The first thing he did is the two brothers call. Clarence and John, they're locked up right next to Frank's cell. 
In this manner, the inmates were given authority to communicate with one another on a constant basis without generating any doubts. Now, we'll start with the first part. According to Morris's plan, first and foremost, they must escape the dungeon to the ventilation hole positioned at the top. But how will they accomplish this? In reality, they have to navigate the space, which is located behind their cells. Good. We need to explain further. Behind their cells is a passageway, from which sewage services pass through. The goal is to break out of their cells in order to get there. Following that, they have to go through the passageway, all the way down to the ventilation hole. Then, they will cut the steel bars, which covers the hole. And through the hole, they will ascend to the prison's roof. But the question is, how will they get out of their cells to reach the space behind the cells? Well, quite simply, Frank, the operation mastermind, find out that every cell has a ventilation hole. However, the holes are quite small. As a result, no human can pass through it. Frank, the leader, takes note of how the prison walls have weakened. First and foremost, because of the authorities' negligence for many years for renovation and maintenance work. Secondly, because of the salt in the seawater that was constantly bouncing off the walls, as a result, the walls became very weak. In order to break down these walls, they did, however, require tools. To begin the drilling procedure, but from were they going to get these tools? Prisoners smuggled spoons of food into their cells. And using these spoons, they started the digging process. And as you might expect, it took many months to expand the openings in order to pass through them easily. During the excavation period, they must maintain the confidentiality of the process. None of the guards should find out about them. So, they were digging at the time when the prisoners were playing their musical instruments. Yes. What you heard is true. Every night, the prisoners were allowed to play with their musical instruments for one hour. The gang used that hour to dig. In short, the gang took advantage of any opportunity to dig. And of course, whenever there was a gang member present, his job was to keep an eye on the situation. This individual was observing the corridor to determine whether a guard is coming to inspect them because Alcatraz prison was notable for the large number of guards present. More than any other prison in the United States, prison guards used to suddenly count all prisoners at any time. But there is a strange piece of information. The other prisoners who were in adjacent cells, they knew about it. They were able to see them digging the ventilation holes, but no one tipped them off. On the contrary, they were helping them. Oh viewer, if you were in the place of the prisoners, would you have done the same and helped your friends escape? Or will you go and tell the guards about it? I am very interested to know your opinion in the comments. They required assistance during the drilling process to cover up the holes they dug. So, they made cardboard panels in the prison workshop and they dyed it the same color as their cell walls. Then they glued it in the place of the openings. In addition to all of this, they were draping their clothes over the cardboard. In this manner, the openings were concealed. After months of hard work, they were able to shape the openings to fit their bodies. But the excavation was only the beginning of the plan. Their goal was not only to get out of their cells, they were also planning to escape from the island. And this was the most difficult part. They had to cross the sea. They must find a way to build a boat using all available resources. One day, they discovered an article in one of the prison magazines. This article will show them how to make a rubber boat and life jackets out of raincoats. Luckily for them, inside the prison, these coats were widely available. Therefore, they began collecting and stealing them from various locations throughout the prison. Other inmates assisted them with this task. But the problem was finding a place to store it and finding a place to work on rubber rafts and life jackets. They required a facility that could be used as a workshop. The only location they found was the space above their cells. It is that space in which Allen discovered the ventilation duct opening. But there was another issue. That place was entirely exposed to the guards. So what's the solution? Allen West, under the guidance of Frank, the mastermind, did a very clever trick. This may be the most important trick of the entire escape. Allen was in charge of cleaning the space above the cells. So he managed to persuade the guards to attach blankets and sheets to the bars in order to prevent dust from falling during cleaning. He was even flinging dust at them 
to demonstrate that this is a major issue that must be addressed as soon as possible. The plan was successful. The guards let him hang blankets and sheets from the bars. And with this clever trick, they got a covered space. It couldn't be monitored by guards, which they can use as a workshop. This was a serious security error. That was awful to the point where this incident was not included in the original records, and it did not come to light until the year 1990. That is, 20 years after the incident occurred. The area was covered for two months. During this time, the gang members took turns going up to that spot and work on making rubber boats and life jackets. They were, as well, cutting iron bars located on the ventilation duct opening. They literally transformed the space into a workshop. They were able to smuggle all of the necessary tools. The only issue they had was that they were not in their cells. As previously stated, the guards searched the inmates on a regular basis. And suppose one of them was working, and a guard came to his cell and found him missing. The plan will undoubtedly fail. As a result of this, they made false heads to fool the guards into thinking they were asleep. All their work was done at night. They'd put fake heads on their pillows and cover them with blankets. When the guard arrives to inspect, he could clearly see a head on the pillow and quickly move to the next cell. These are real pictures of fake heads. It is still on display in the prison museum. And here's the question. How were the heads created? How did they get the materials? In reality, all of the materials were in their proper cells. All they needed was some soap. They mixed in some cement dust from the drilling procedure. Bring some toilet paper. Paste. They also acquired dyes from the jail workshop. Then they combined them all together and created fake heads. The only aspect that was tough to replicate was the hair. This is where Clarence Anglin enters the picture. One of the brothers employed at the prison barbershop, he is the one who brought the hair to make fake heads. And each time, he used to bring a lot of prisoners' hair. Until they had enough hair for all the fake heads. This was the second trick they used. Now, they could go up every night and work in their secret workshop in shifts. Following two months of hard labor, the long-awaited day has arrived. We are now on June 11th, 1962. It's time to go to bed. At 9.30 p.m., the jail lights were turned off. The four inmates began carrying out the escape plan. Each of them placed his fake head on his bed and covered it with his blanket. If a guard came by to check on them, he'd assume they were sleeping. They opened the ventilation holes they had excavated months before. They went to the rear passage, which was behind their cells. The passageway will take them to their workshop and then to the ventilation duct, which will take them to the prison's roof. But only three of them were able to escape from the prison. Alan was unable to open his vent. Apparently, he used far too much cement to seal the hole. The hole had hardened, making it extremely impossible to drill again. When the remaining three realized what was going on, they assured him that they would continue on their path. He needs to catch up to them as soon as possible. Alan kept trying to open up the gap while the others moved forward. They began by preparing the rubber raft and life jackets. The steel bars at the ventilation duct's aperture were then removed. When they had finished their preparations, Alan was unable to leave his prison cell. So, they chose to abandon him. They had already agreed that if anything happened to any of them, others will carry on without him. In fact, the other three men, the Anglin brothers and Frank Morris, climbed the prison's roof. They crept softly until they arrived at the prison walls. It was only a simple iron fence. They easily cut it off and headed ashore. On the beach, they were able to inflate their boat by utilizing Frank Morris' instrument. They've adjusted it such that it no longer makes any noise and simply blows air. Seven o'clock in the morning, the prison's alarm clock went off. The morning prisoner count began. When the guards arrived, every prisoner had to remain inside his cell. And when the guards arrived to the cell of Frank Morris, they began to call him three times. Then, the guard inserted his hand to move his head. He was shocked when his head fell and rolled in front of him on the ground. The prison warden was notified. The sirens then went off. Then, a thorough search was conducted. They notified the authorities. The FBI sent an experienced team to help with the search and investigation. Allen was the first person interrogated because they saw a hole in his cell. It was obvious he was one among the inmates preparing an escape. Allen appeared cooperative during his interview because he had no other choice. 
It is thought that he withheld certain information that he was aware of to keep them wondering about what his companions would do once they arrive in San Francisco's beach. The Alcatraz prison guards searched the entire island for them and discovered nothing. This confirms that they sailed into the water on their boat. The officers were questioning the detainees, but they didn't want to talk or share any useful information. The three inmates vanished. As with the absence of people who watch but do not comment, there was no trace of the three inmates. Actually, the difficult escape from Alcatraz jail was successful. Naturally, the investigation did not end there and lasted many years. The investigation was formally closed by saying that these three prisoners drowned in the sea. But is this a true conclusion or only a claim? Before you finish watching the video, please leave your thoughts in the comments section. Was the escape successful and did the inmates survive? Or as investigations claim, did they drown? Okay, let's go into the specifics of the investigation. The police discovered the life jackets but not the boat. They also discovered bags. Pictures and letters that appeared to belong to the Anglin brothers were found within the baggage. They were photos of themselves and their families, as well as letters they wrote to them while imprisoned. The contents of the bag appeared to be valuable to the brothers, and they're not going to give it up easy unless they die at sea. This is regarded as conclusive proof that they drowned. However, at the same time, many experts are opposed to this viewpoint, where they claim that the three bodies could not have drowned and were not discovered despite accurate searches. Many experts thought it was illogical. There appears to be a famous photograph of the two brothers, which was published in the year 1975. The photograph was allegedly taken in Brazil. I mean, when they got away, they moved to Brazil and settled down. However, it is unclear whether this photograph is truly theirs. There is no certainty. It was also reported that the brother's mother was receiving a flower gift from an unknown source. In addition to that, in the year 2013, according to reports, a letter was written to the FBI. Someone mentioned John Anglin. One of the two siblings, he claimed to have escaped from Alcatraz jail with two other inmates, but was now in a difficult situation. He's 83 years old and suffering from cancer. He is willing to give himself up in exchange for medical care. There were several events, theories, and explanations for what happened after the Alcatraz jail escape. However, nothing has been confirmed as of yet. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel. Watch Argentina's Biggest Bank Robbery. It is a very good video. Now goodbye until the next story.